Okay, moving forward. The reason why we needed to actually do the podcast this week, because we were going to save that, you know, Volume 6 stuff for next week, but... Mm. Why did we need to come on this week? Well, we needed to come on this week because At Games finally released their info on the Legends pinball cabinet. They did. And we have now at least a render of a picture, and we have specs and price and tentative release dates and all that. So this is where we're going to dive in a little bit on this. And... Then we'll dive into something else afterwards that just amused us to no end. Okay, so first things first. Why don't we go ahead and let me uh, let me show a picture of this bad boy, if I can. And I think we're going to... Nope, that's not the image that I wanted. I thought I was all prepped. How did I not get prepped, Jared? New there York it is. There it is. There it is. That would be the Legends Pinball... Uh, cabinet render that they had. And I keep on saying render because this isn't the uh, finalized product, but you can bet it's probably very, very close. Pretty close, yeah. Pretty close. Um, and just uh, just for the sake of doing this, and why is that still showing? Go away. There it is. So there's the four cabinets. So uh, last week we showed you this also, but we had the Guns N' Roses cabinet in there. This week we have it with there. So uh, price point on Legends Pinball is five ninety nine, and then four ninety nine for the Marvel Pinball cab from Arcade One Up. Well played games with their Zacharia Pinball machine at four ninety nine, and then Haunted House from well not Haunted House, uh, the Gottlieb twelve and one from Toy Shock is at three ninety nine. although when they come out with their 2.0 version, I think that's going to be up near 450 or maybe 499 also. Um, mm, we just I haven't so. really heard anything about that. No, they're keeping very tight-lipped about what's going on there. I haven't heard any anything in all the Facebook forums that I've um, been sniffing around in. Yeah. So, yeah, nothing on that yet. So the... Some of the things to be aware of with this uh, cabinet. Um, it is almost a full-size cab compared to a regular pinball. They're uh, saying that it's 80 to 90% full-size. It's certainly taller than the other cabs, um, larger dimensions. Part of that larger dimension is that they're using a 32-inch uh, uh, monitor instead of a 24-inch monitor that the uh, other three are all using. They're also using in their back glass a uh, 15 and a half inch LCD monitor. Um, nobody, uh, nobody else in this group has a, a video monitor. Uh, Arcade One Up obviously has their DMD monitor, but it's not meant for displaying uh, cabinet art. Uh, by no. stretch of imagination. No. Um, that's the kind of the the primary difference for the reason for the size. All right, now let's go ahead and zoom in on this thing. So give you a little better look. Uh, things to note. Obviously not a sunken play field. Um, it no. is using a piece of glass over the top. Yes, um, it seems they like made that as a selling point actually. Yeah, oh, it seems like Arcade 1UP well. is the only one that's using uh, acrylic. And there is a question that we, I'm going to have to ask is, can we replace the acrylic with our own piece of glass? If we want mm. to, that'd be a, I hope that that kind of a mod is allowed. Cause then you just, you know, go over to Michael's and the Aaron brothers inside and say, Hey, cut me a piece just of frame glass and voila. Uh, <laughs> done. Yeah. Uh, the other thing to note, uh, that gigantic apron in the front, which it's you pretty hard to miss, pretty yeah. hard to miss, but you'll notice there is a little, uh, D pad on there. And that's, that's true. That is for, uh, obviously some navigation purposes. And yeah. from what we're hearing, that whole apron will be removable and be replaceable at some other time with arcade sticks or trackball. Uh, because yes. this is a multi-cade machine, not just pinball. That's right. Yep. Um, you'll notice. So, so I wonder where we've seen that before. Uh, that seems really familiar. <laughs> like this swappable control panel thing at the front. I'm, I'm sure I've seen that somewhere. Might be this company, I don't know, uh, R, uh, uh, Aardvark? No. Uh, no, no. Austra no, they are in Australia. Oh, yeah, they, Arcuda. 
Akuda. That's the one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> um, the uh, there is a plunger there, obviously, um, and you'll notice it's got the two sets of buttons. So I'm assuming that one of them is for nudging. Although apparently this does have an accelerometer in it, also. Um, yes, it does. I find it interesting that they're not promoting the accelerometer action or the fact that they say that they do have haptic feedback, whereas yeah, one up is right. making that a huge selling feature. So I'm kind of curious to know uh, how those, how these two are differing with that respect. Um, I have a feeling it might be the degree of haptics because it sounds I like I think the RK one up cabinet has really deeply integrated haptics from what we've read and heard. Yeah. And I got a feeling that this might be less so because it's really hard to integrate deeply with haptics when you don't actually have a custom bit of software written to integrate with the haptics very deeply. Correct. So yeah, I think it'll it'll be there. Like you'll feel bumps and stuff, but it won't be to the degree that you get on arcade one up. And then of course you've got the uh, four buttons on the front, which uh, obviously are for probably another purpose of navigation within this. Um, let's go ahead and then throw up a comparison of the two. So somebody complained that my <laughs> my my Photoshop job on the other one didn't show the M2 scale. So I tried to scale the table legs because I'm assuming the table legs are the same. Uh, obviously, it's slightly different photographic angle for the one up arcade but i think that gives you a sense of at least the height that there is definitely a height difference um uh, i think mm. the height on the legends pinball i'm trying to find it here it's 67 inches high whereas the arcade one up one is 56 inches high so it's a full foot taller yeah. Um, the thing that I'm really looking at with this render, and yes, yeah. it is a render. You take that or leave it. But the that front panel area um, on the at games cabinet is is just really angular. Um, and you look at the render on the um, arcade one up cabinet, and it does have slightly curved edges on it. Like mm -hmm. a real lockdown bar should, mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering if the final product from At Games will actually address the the edginess to that area because that's not going to be very comfortable playing. I'm also a little bit um, surprised with the At Games cabinet in that the the corners, the front corners of the lockdown bar actually play a pretty important role with tilting. You actually need your palms in the position of the corners um, to to be able to tilt the machine properly because you need that sort of fulcrum point um, that you can push against. So if you're only resting your arms essentially either side of the cabinet without any sort of horizontal movement points that you can anchor onto, it's going to be really hard to tilt this thing. So um, that will be a factor in play as well, which I'd like to follow more closely. Yeah. I, uh, I think looking at the two of these... I, I don't like how steep the angle is of the Legends Pinball. Um, apparently, there's been they've said that it probably is not going to be that steep of an angle. Mm. Um, but I, it's you look at the marble one; it looks like a pinball cab. It's it, got the front it door. It's got the proper amount of material depth, and I'm sure that when they were doing a full size, I mean, if they're doing a practically full size. Uh, machine there just trimming off six to eight inches off the bottom probably saves them quite a significant amount of money um, mm. in materials but it it doesn't look as much like a pinball machine as the other one and then i really do like the sunken play field on the marvel cab um, mm. that that it's something that uh vp cabs did on theirs uh, machines also, and I think it just sells the pinball look. Um, I like that a lot. Yeah. The other it thing, does, like, it does give that little bit of depth, and it does it makes it look less like uh, an EM or a early solid state table with the play field right at the top. Yeah. Um, as well. So, but even yeah, even it, those, I mean, and I know that the 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 
cab modes of a lot of these, well, I mean, like Zen is rendering the 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 mirror, well, not the mirror blades, but the what do you call that? The sides of the, the <laughs> of the cabs, the side insides of the cab, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, that might wind up looking a little weird on the marble cab, having like a double depth kind of thing going, but I think it does help mm. sell the 3D aspect. Um, the main thing, though, that I oh, I can't the, get past... The thing is, the thing is, they may not even have those views in there. They may actually be... Remember, they have custom written the software for this. You're so right. they can guarantee You're right. that they probably won't even have that in there. It'll just be focused on the play field. But you might even see the character effects in there looking up at you. Because remember, that's a that's a big thing that um, a lot of the our other friends of the show talked about in cabinet mode where the the the, the actual rendered characters aren't looking at you they're looking no. at the front of the play field. yes they are so if they adjust that as well i mean if they've had to do everything else they may as well adjust it as well and have everyone looking up at you addressing you as the like the 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 player that would be pretty that would be better than having any sort of side art or anything like that yeah uh speaking of art i'm sorry but that artwork on the legends cab is hideous and it's not great. It's a problem that I have in general with multicades. They try and throw on, like, look at everything that we have, and you just get this hideous collage that is an eyesore. It's ice a bit art. of a vomit. Yeah. It's, it's terrible. I'm sorry. It's just god-awful. Um, and the funny thing is that brand. some people are sitting there going, oh, well, that's okay. You can just reskin it. Uh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> what if I didn't rather... want to pay more money <laughs> yeah just give me like a just yeah you know, with the other legends ultimate cabinets they're just black with the legends legends brand on it and yeah so a few like, there's a few icons on it but they're all like sort of just like the icons from the games just sort of laid on like in, in a stack wasn't form, that what, what uh what virtual pin was doing also mm, i think so yeah so it's sort of like why why wouldn't you just go with something simple like that like I don't know. It's it seems unusual. It does, but then again, maybe it'll you know look perfectly fine next to your other multi-cade full-size cabs. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it may be fine. Yeah. Or you know maybe you just take it out of the box, go meh, meh, and then just focus on the games. You know, because that's <laughs> the thing as well. You know, because the thing is, if you have this, it's wedge between other things. You won't even see the side art. See it. So. Except for you'll still see that apron, which you, you is well, still more vomit. That is the render of the apron. That like is it's true. Probably, if it's going to be a swappable control panel, then that will really not matter. That's just essentially a, a dummy sort of placeholder, not so much a placeholder image, but like a um, uh, essentially a shield that you'll most likely replace with a controller panel anyhow. So it doesn't really matter. 